Before we continue, why don't you go and check out one of my other videos. I have already done an unboxing video of the Hobby Boss T35 and I have done a brief history of the T35. Go and check both of those out. But here's an even briefer history of the T35. The T-35A is a Soviet multi-turreted heavy tank. The tank has five turrets, one with a KT-28 gun, two with K-20-45mm guns, and two with DT-29 machine guns. There were 59 production vehicles built. The Hobby Boss kit which I am building is the early production model, but more specifically is a model 1936 or 35 production. However, I am converting my one to a model 1934 production. The T-35 was produced in a vast variety of types and subtypes, all of which have very distinctive features. To the average person, each T-35 might look the same as the next, however there are very many markers to look out for when it comes to the type of T-35. As stated earlier, I am producing a 1934 built tank. Let's go over some of the main features that make this tank a model 1934 and why, why don't we go over all of the features of the tanks for clarification. So the tank that is on screen now is a 1934 produced tank. We can tell this by the big hatch in the turret. The antenna has six arms which was later upgraded to eight arms. The exhaust pipe is the early exterior type and while we cannot see it, the turret only has one strip of supporting armour. All of these features mean that it was a 1934 produced tank. More importantly, sh chassis numbers beginning with 148. The tank I am producing is chassis number 14830, which is on your screen now. This tank was indeed produced in 1934, and was involved in the defence of Kharkov. The combat records show that this tank was, did not belong to the 67th or 68th tank regiments where most of the T-35s served, but rather was delivered to the tank school at Kharkov. This is one of two tanks you can build out of the box using the Hobby Boss kit. However, you do need to do some minor conversions to this one to make it this tank. The other tank you can make is T-35 chassis number 22028. This was also involved in the defence of Kharkov. This tank is on your screen now. This tank had a single turret hatch, but if you look at the turret in this picture, you can see there are two strips of armour on either side of the turret. This tank does have the early style exhaust, which you can see now, and photos of this tank show it from 1941 all the way up until 1943, slowly deteriorating in state. However, I am producing 14830. You may be wondering why you can only make one tank out of this kit even though there were many single hatched T-35s produced. The answer is simple. All other tanks were updated to have the later type exterior exhaust. While you can convert your model into this tank, it is easier to build it out the box with the single early hatch. This late exhaust pipe, as on screen, was two exterior pipes. There were 31 single hatched T-35s produced, however there are only photographs of two tanks with the early type exhaust, which means that if you want to build out the box you can only build two tanks, and even then you have to do a little bit of conversion like I am doing on 14830. Let's take a closer look of what we need to do to make 14830. Take a look at this picture here. This is 14830 after a little while in the field and she's been stripped. She has some very important markers. We can see in the red circle a foot plate for the middle arm when this tank originally had three antenna arms. The tank was later updated to have eight antenna arms, but this was also removed. In the yellow circle, we can see that we are missing a strip of supporting armor for the turret, which also indicates that this is one of the early production tanks. Chassis numbers 288 and 399 also had this strip of armour missing, however had 8 antenna arms. The green circle shows us that the machine gun turrets are without amplification. Some tanks were returned to the factories and upgraded with amplified machine gun faces. This was to stop small calibre ammunition hitting and penetrating the front armour. The purple arrow is interesting because we can just make out the early pre-war divisional markings. No T-35 operated in the field with these markings. 
However, there are many photos of T-35s after they were knocked out and sitting in the field for a few months, with this coming through where the paint has worn off. There is some evidence to suggest that other tanks, including BT-5s and T-26s, did operate in World War II with this divisional symbol. However, no T-35 did. If you are interested in more information on 14830 and T-35s in general, then please look out for my book. My book is currently being written, however I am looking to get it published within the year. The title of this book is Fallen Giants, a combat debut of the T-35 tank. Now with that out of the way, let's move on to the build of this tank. and we. As stated previously, the turret that comes in the Hobby Boss kit is actually incorrect for initial production T-35s. You have to remove this rear strip of armour, which you can see I've done here. These photos were taken very shortly after I completed the removal of the strip, and therefore it's a little bit rough around the edges. Next you have to remove the additional uh, armour around the driver's hatch, which is only present in later conical tanks. Here you can see the antenna arms I'm using. I cut off the arms to keep me the feet where I put them on the tank. You can also see I've used a white piece of plastic card to simulate the middle plate which does appear to be much bigger than the rest. I decided to move straight onto the KT-28 gun next which is very straightforward and I installed this. In addition to this I put on the turret roof. The next job was filling in the hulls for where the machine gun turret guard goes on the conical tanks. I also drilled out the holes necessary for the early type exhaust. Next I constructed the hull. For show purposes at this early stage I also decided to construct the 45mm gun turrets. These are very straightforward where all I have to do is put on the bottom rotating plate. Next I put on the early type driver's hatch, and then I moved on to the rear fan, and the drive wheel and transmission area. Next I installed the turret pedestal. Next I constructed the suspension system, which consists of four road wheels, four coiled springs, two arms per side, and then attached this to the tank. Next I constructed the return rollers. There are six return rollers per side on the early production T-35s. I also attached the adjustable screw threading front idler wheel attachment. Next I built up the front idler wheel and the track support wheel. The T-35 track was notoriously poor so it needed an extra piece of support between the last bogey and the front idler wheel. This was a simple wheel surrounded by a box which also attached to the skirt. Next I put on the drive wheel and then made up the side skirts. The side skirts in real life were 10mm thick and attached to this body by separators between the bogies and by strips that attached to the fenders. Not entirely sure what these are but first photo etch on the tank, put them on. Then I installed the exhaust system, which is fairly straightforward, and the next big job was the headlights, as you can see here. Then I attached the driver's hatch, and as a dry run I put on the fenders. Next I put on the smoke generator boxes, and constructed the 45mm gun turrets. Next for presentation I built up the MG turrets. Next big job is the track. This track is Lincoln length and it's fairly straightforward to put on as you can see. Next it's probably my least favourite part of building T-35s are putting on the strips that attach the fenders to the um, side skirts. Always a bit messy, always leaves a bit of residue and I don't particularly enjoy doing them. And after that it's just a case of the transmission hatches going on as you can see here and then I put on the fan cover. I then added on the photo etch the top of the smoke generator armour. Then it was a case of putting on the periscopes and the hatch onto the main hatch and doing the same with all the other hatches. I then built up the machine gun turrets which were fairly straightforward. Put on all the lifting hooks, 
and I put on the jack supports which go on the side of smoke generators then I did the towing eyes which are nice and straightforward and it all went on the tank nicely uh, after that it was a case of doing the jacks the photo etch ladders the spare track and as you can see in these pictures there's a couple of ways you can store the track on the side skirt or on the fender next is the tow rope which attaches onto the fender nice and straightforward and then we're pretty much done well that's nice and quick and here's a comparison of the tank with a uh, Renault 35 with a 47mm gun and a German infantryman. Now we're going to move on to my least favourite part of model making, the painting. The uh, colours I use are from Life Colour. I'm using Dark Olive UA237 which is the light Russian green. 238 is the Dark Olive VAR. So this is my workstation, it's all very messy and these are old photos but uh, yeah, I had a lot of tanks on the go at one point. <laughs> and then when I decided to start this video. So, simple as clamp on and spray up. And this is how they look. Uh, it's a very green green as the best way I can describe it. So next I use the Humbrol Polish paints to make do the machine guns and stuff. The paint number I use is 27004. I use this for the track as well as the machine guns. And also the tool heads. I use a wood colour for the handles of the tools and yeah, all done pretty much. I also use a special colour for the uh, tyres which is a rubber black, but I can't remember the number. So next I use the Humbrol gloss varnish, the one that comes in the 200ml bottles which is the only gloss varnish I find which really gives a nice gloss sheen. And it's the only Humbrol varnish I actually use because otherwise I found that it does destroy my kits, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, the only problem with it is if it touches photo etch, it kind of frosts up like you can see in this picture here. I then use the MIG Dark Wash to get uh, some nice highlights with the seams and stuff. Now I wanted a very dirty tank and that is what I managed to achieve. In this picture here I have used a q-tip to remove most of the wash from the turret but I haven't used the q-tip to remove the wash from the hull. It was at this point here my cat decided to join me. I may stress that this kit took me about a month to do. So here we have the kit with most of the wash removed. Next I moved on to the decals. So the photos of 14830 show it has a Russian star simple as put it in water and apply. Now the actual location of this Russian star varies from tank to tank. 14830 has it between the seam between two of the skirt plates and the sort of star bolt pattern. However some tanks have the star above the star bolt pattern. However at this point we are pretty much done. I've used some weathering stuff on the exhaust to give it a sort of rusted effect and I'm also going to be using a Humbrol uh, wash for rust on the track which you can see here. Next step really now is to work out the old airbrush and to give it a matte varnish and as a special treat I actually did record myself doing it so enjoy it.
So what the matte varnish really does is it takes away that sheen that you needed to get the pigments and the oils to not uh, stick so you can get them to rub off correctly. So although it means loads of extra steps in the building, it does give a nice payoff. As I said earlier, I wanted a dirty look and that is ultimately what I got. Along with this step, you then use your final weathering powders. So I used a black for the exhaust pipes and um, I also used a mud for the uh, the track sides, the, the fenders, the skirts. Um, this was simply just dry brushed on. And as you can see later in the last picture, um, I did a more proper mud effect with water to make it stick. And I like this, but I do feel it's a little heavy handed. So during the airbrushing bit, you did see I brought in another T35. This is T35 chassis number 98816. And as you can see, it's got a very heavy mud look where my other tank has only got a very light dust. However, I think that is actually all I'm gonna do. The tank is done. That would have normally been the end of this video. I'd already rendered the video and ready to upload. However, I then went to a My Model Club and uh, was persuaded to enter into the modeling competition. And I came second place! I don't know which one of the two T35s came second place, but one of them did. And what was really nice is they were uploaded to the Facebook page and some really nice quality pictures came out. And they actually look really good and really professional, better than my shitty camera. So here you can see them on screen. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the model kit that came first was actually a beautifully made Spitfire, uh, which is the last picture. I hope people found this useful and interesting. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Please keep a lookout for my book, Fall on Giants, the combat debut of the T-35A tank. As I said, hopefully within the year, maybe less, I will be able to get this book on store shelves. Uh, the book is about 70% done and uh, it's going to have about 60 pictures of T-35s with detailed description on what, uh, how they served, how they fought, what destroyed them. And it's also going to have roughly eight colour profiles plus some other content including other photos of tanks which served alongside the T-35 and some technical drawings. So this has been Iron Bloke. Until the next time, I'll see you then.